The Buddha speaks of concentration as a perception attainment through all the levels, starting with the first jhana all the way up to the dimension of nothingness. It's the perception you hold in mind that keeps you here. Which means that as we're concentrating, we're fighting against the little passage we just chanted just now about perceptions being inconstant. Concentration, of course, itself is inconstant, but that doesn't mean you just give it up, throw it away. It's a fabrication, just like all the other fabrications in the path. It's something you've got to work on, something you've got to develop. You're mindful to give rise to it, and you're mindful to keep it going. When the Buddha talks about mindfulness as a governing principle in the practice, it's just that. You don't just see things coming and going and leaving them at that. You realize there's some things that you want to give rise to, other things you want to keep going, and other things you want to prevent. So in this case, you want to keep going the perception of the breath. And you can test different perceptions of the breath to see which ones are most conducive to settling down right now. The breath is flowing through the whole body. The breath is little lines going through the body, coming in and out of the pores. Whatever perception allows you to settle with the breath and have a sense of being comfortable here. And you notice that the perception you apply to the body will have an impact on how you experience the body. It's not just a matter of trying to get the most accurate picture in your mind of what the breath is doing. You want to keep a picture in mind that's going to be helpful in getting the mind to settle down, and then learning to stick with it. As you go through the various levels of concentration, the object gets a lot more refined. And sometimes we want to rush to the more refined levels when you're not quite ready. Because when you're working, say, with the really obvious breath sensations in the body, they support your perception. The perception may come in little blips, and then you have to remember to extend a little bit more, and then extend a little bit more. And in those gaps, the fact that you've got an obvious breath sensation right here helps with the continuity. In other words, the perception keeps you with the breath, and the breath keeps you with the perception. And if your ability to keep the perception going, if your mindfulness is not strong enough, then as soon as the breath begins to disappear, that little mutual help society begins to break down. The sensation of the breath is not there to remind you to keep the perception going, and you can drop it very easily. So if you find yourself moving into an area where the breath is that refined and you can't follow it, step back. Allow the breath to be a little bit more blatant, a little more obvious, and work on this skill of just keeping the perception going, stitching one perception to another, to another, to another. Until that thread stitching them together gets a lot stronger, then you'll be able to stay with more refined objects, all the way to the point where the breath stops, the in and out breath stops, and what you've got left is a very still field of breath energy throughout the body. And if your mindfulness is strong enough, you'll be able to stay right there, very still. As it gets even stronger, you begin to notice that the perception of the body having a shape begins to come and go. And you can let that perception go. And what you've got left is a little cloud of little sensation droplets. And you begin to sense that there's a sense of space between all those droplets. Now, if you can't stay with that, you go back to the sensation of having a body. 
But if you find that you don't need a very strong physical sensation to keep you with that perception of space, you'll be able to stay there. This is why you have to build up to these things by strengthening your mindfulness, your ability to remember to stay right here. Because it's the perception that keeps you going, and the mindfulness that keeps the perception going, the sensations that help to support that perception are getting less and less obvious. The same applies to the perception of infinite consciousness, the perception of nothingness. And that one, all you have keeping you going is that perception. The, the mind can reach an equilibrium where it doesn't need a perception in order to stay concentrated to get to that state. It's called the neither perception or non-perception. This requires a lot of equilibrium. So try to take stock of where you are on this ladder of concentration. You find yourself reaching up to a higher level and you kind of grasp in at the air and there doesn't seem to be anything there, well, go back to where you are. Or you can hold on to the next rung a little bit, but then you find that it's getting a little slippery and well, you go back to where you feel more, more solid. The burden of the concentration lies right in this act of being mindful. That's why it's so important to realize that when the Buddha was teaching mindfulness and concentration, they were meant to go together. Sometimes your mindfulness is a broad, open acceptance of whatever comes up, whereas concentration is more narrow, focused, effortful. In other words, two things you can't do at the same time. I was even reading one book where they were saying that Basically, there are two paths. There's the path of mindfulness on the one hand, there's a path of concentration and effort on the other hand, but, and they don't mix. That's based on a misunderstanding of mindfulness. Mindfulness is the ability to keep something in mind. And you need it for concentration, because that's what stitches the various perceptions together that hold your mind right here, so you don't go wandering off. When you're beginning, it's like having a lot of frayed threads. The thread may be there, but it's not stitched to anything. Or that you have, may have little perception moments, but there's nothing stitching them together. But you can be clear about the perception and clear about the sensations that support the perception. Then even if there are few lapses in the thread of mindfulness, the sensation supports you. And you're right here, right here, right here. So try to be very meticulous in threading things together, because that's what takes these little perceptions that are inconstant, and you turn them into something that's more constant. You're pushing against that characteristic of inconstancy, just like you're pushing against the characteristic of stress. You're trying to make things pleasant here. You're pushing against the characteristic of not self. You're trying to get some control over your ability to stitch these things together into something that's a genuine path, something that can take you someplace. That's not going to take you out of the body. It's, it's all going to go deeper and deeper in here, but it goes deeper into the mind. And as your mindfulness gets stronger, then you can stay with more and more subtle things. I knew a monk one time in Thailand who was reputed to have psychic powers, very strange psychic powers. He told a John Fuhrer one time of a trip he had taken together with another monk. They'd gotten permission from the Davis to go into this cave. There was a treasure in the cave that they wanted. And they'd asked permission of the Davis. The Davis had given permission. And as they're going through the cave, they found the skeletons of other people who had been in the cave and had tried to think, <clears throat> tried to take things that hadn't been allowed. Sounds like a kind of Indiana Jones movie. They got what they wanted and left. And 
And so as you're meditating here, remember there are other things that would tempt you away. You might start stitching other things aside from the breath into your mind state. But right now that's not what you want. There may be temptations on either side, like in the cave. But you try to be straight arrow, in the sense you stick with these perceptions, just the breath, just the breath, just the breath. And that way you get through okay.